So guys, you know about SMMA, you now have started setting meetings on top of meetings, but you just can't seem to close any clients. So guys, in today's video, I wanna break down exactly how you go about closing clients, the script you should use, and what you should say on your sales calls to one, demand respect, and two, actually take client or potential client through not having known you to actually paying you money upfront on the actual calls. So guys, with that being said, let's break down the actual script that I use, the methodology and the actual tonality that I use when I go about doing sales calls. This video is going to be an absolute fire banger video. I'm actually dropping this for completely free. Can't believe it, but guys, I wanna help you guys out on your sales calls. So let's jump straight into it. So guys, there's a few things you need to kind of understand before we get into the whole like sales script, what you should say, what you shouldn't say and stuff like that. But guys, what you need to do first and foremost is stop trying to actually close clients. Yes, of course you wanna close clients, but you need to stop putting your focus on and making it so important that you get a yes at the beginning so guys what you need to do is eliminate you focusing solely on you know getting a close and actually focus more on accurately diagnosing that person's business now guys this is nothing new nothing sexy but it works time and time again what you need to do also guys is switch your attention from being a salesperson to a trusted advisor you want to be seen as a trusted advisor almost like a doctor have you ever been to the doctors guys I'm pretty sure you guys have been to the doctors well you need to treat your sales calls like diagnosing a patient diagnosing their business basically and you need to act as if you're a doctor now when you go to the doctors they have all the authority they take the lead they ask the questions and they ask you quite personal questions as well like where's the pain hurting how long have your symptoms been present what have you tried to fix this all those sorts of questions and that's what you're going to be doing in your sales calls as well guys so guys a couple of other things you want to remember is I like to actually take my discovery calls on zoom zoom on my actual computer I like to have my headphones in I like to have my hands free with a notepad in my actual hand with a pen in my hand or a pencil and I like to write down what my actual client saying to me and I like to kind of use my hands to express certain points and say this thing and that thing and actually use my hands while I'm talking to clients and stuff like that by the way guys most of the clients that I've actually closed on Upwork I actually do not use my camera I actually turn my camera off and just have my profile picture on there and again that's because I feel like especially if you guys are new to this sort of stuff you're going to be focusing on too much about what your hair looks like what your rough beard looks like like mine right now but apologies for that by the way it's you know the whole coronavirus and lockdown and whatnot but guys you're going to be focusing on too much about what you look like and trying to look good instead of that just eliminate the video and just kind of have it on just on you know without the actual video on and you can still close clients by the way without having your video on so guys let me prelude by saying that look i used to absolutely like fucking suck at sales now i've grown my agency to the point where it's around 4.4k of course i have clients on hold right now by the way i don't just want to hype up my numbers but guys i found a method right now that's churning me out clients after clients there's been times where multiple times where i've closed multiple clients within just a couple of days apart from each other so i know how to close clients i've been on hundreds literally on hundreds I was gonna say thousands then I'm not there yet I've been on multiple hundred calls with you know people from my personal brand people for the actual agency I've literally been on so many calls I'll try for a screenshot of, of how many people have actually come through my actually acuity scheduling and my actual zoom I think you can see how many zoom calls you've had but guys I'll show you some sort of stats to show up so I've been on a lot of calls guys and I've noticed a lot of things I've made a lot of money actually closing clients right there and then on the actual spot I've made money actually using these scripts that I'm actually gonna tell you and the methods that I tell you so it's not just the wacky theory that I've just made up or anything like that this shit actually works so guys let's jump straight into it so what I've done is kind of outlined the script and broke it down into a couple of parts for you to remember and we're gonna jump straight into part number one so part number one is the actual small talk so when a person first joins your zoom call again I highly recommend you use zoom calls there's going to be establishing your connections I guess where you kind of go John can you hear me is the audio coming through okay and this is part one which is more like small talk you're, you're just making small talk can you hear me how's the weather where you are how's the quarantine treating you don't by the way guys spend more than two minutes on this particular part of the call the reason being is because business owners that you're going to be speaking to can smell like bs fake rapport building like cheesy lines from a mile away i highly recommend that if you're using a script don't say the words in the script like word for word like each word in the same order like it's just going to sound way too scripted and you're going to sound robotic you need to relax on this you want to speak slow you want to use pauses and guys you want to make them do the most talking it's actually the reverse of what you may think because i used to think that you know with sales you have to be very 
quick talking. I know I, I speak quick on my videos, but that's just because I'm trying to make my points and not make these videos too long, which I always end up freaking doing. You don't actually want to be speaking quickly, nowhere near as quickly as I'm speaking right now. You want to be confident. You want to lower your voice if you need to. You want to come across as slow, methodical, and, and you want to actually pause. The pause is the most, probably the most important thing about the actual sales script. So part one, you're literally just going to ask them how they've been, how their week's been, what's the weather like, how's the quarantine treating them again. Don't spend too much time on this. So guys, once you're done with the small talk, what you're going to do is just use this line. So you're going to go, okay, John, well, we can jump right into the call if you'd want to. Is that okay with you? You can literally use that line, kind of, you know, raise your tone a little bit at the end whenever you ask questions. I feel like that actually helps a bit. So you go, okay, John, so we can jump straight into the call right now if you wanted to. Is that okay with you? You want to pause and then what's going to happen is they're going to say, yes, okay, Montel, let's get into it. Here comes part two. So part two is called setting the frame. Now, this is probably the most important part of the call. If you don't do this, you may as well end the call right here, right now, because I have never ever, not even once, and I've actually looked at the numbers, watched my calls, but I've never actually closed a client or anybody from my personal brand like on my coaching stuff without setting the frame first. So what setting the frame is, and if you want a good book about this and setting frames, I highly recommend you go and read a book called The Pitch Anything by a guy called Oren Claff. I think that's how you pronounce his name. Um, don't quote me on that, but you can literally type in Pitch Anything and you'll go find that book on Amazon, Google or whatnot. So guys, here's how I like to set the frame. Here's what I like to do. I go, okay, so John, this is how my discovery calls usually go. What I'm going to do is start off by asking you some questions about you, your business to try get an accurate diagnosis of where you're currently are in at business. And then I want to figure out, you know, what your short term, medium and long term goals are. And if it sounds like you're a good fit for what I do, I'm going to show you exactly how my services are going to help you and get to your desired situation. And then guys, what I say is, and then at the end of the call, you can make a decision whether you want to be a part of that or not. Does that sound good to you, John? And then he will say, yes, of course. So all I'm doing there, guys, is setting the frame. And there's a couple of lines in there. For example, this is how my discovery calls usually go implies that this is not my first rodeo and that this is how I take my calls all the time. And I'm not a newbie to this. I'm an expert. I've done this multiple times now. So that's a little way to get around you coming off as a newbie. And there's another line in there, guys, that actually flips the buyer seller dynamic. So when I say, if you're a good fit for what I do, I'm going to explain on my services and how that works. And then you can make a decision whether you want to be a part of that or not. Does that sound good to you? So basically what I'm doing there is what you call flipping the buyer seller dynamic. I'm saying, if you're a good fit for what I do, then we, I'll talk about my services. Obviously at the end, you can make a decision. I'm saying that I'm actually going to try and close you on the end of the call. So it's kind of like I'm pre-framing that as well. So guys, I'm actually going to speed this, the rest of this up, but those are like the really most important bits, especially setting a frame. So part three is figuring out why they are there. So here's what I like to do. I like to ask the person, you know, what's the reason for the call today? Why have they actually jumped on the call? I try to figure out why are they there basically? So I'll go, okay, so John, look, I know that you've, you know, filled out this whole application and now you're sat with me on a Saturday evening for some form of reason. What is that reasoning? And again, I would say much smoother than I am right now. I'm just trying to rush for you guys and get the actual gist of how I handle my sales calls. I'm not presenting anything. I'm not doing any presentations. I don't have like a presentation. I pull up and whatnot and show them on the screen. I don't do any of that. I literally just go through the script like I'm doing right now. So guys, when you ask them, you know, what's the reason behind them actually booking this call with you today and, you know, sitting down and having this meeting, you want to ask them more deeper questions if they give you some gold answers. So if they say, I seen you, you reached out to me and you sounded like you had a great offer with the Facebook ads and we've been struggling with the Facebook ads, you can obviously ask them more questions. Well, how long have you been dealing with this, John? What have you tried otherwise to actually try fix this? And you can ask, why do you actually reckon, John, that this problem exists in your Facebook ads? Those are awesome questions to ask and dig a little deeper into what their real, real problems are. Because some people don't even need like Facebook ads. Sometimes you will figure out that like, shit, these guys don't even need Facebook ads. They just have a backend problem that's just not working in, in their sales process, for example. So here comes on to part number four, guys. Now, this is where we actually break down the script. Let me break down the script here, guys. You see, when it comes to sales, this is what you're doing. You're basically figuring out, well, this type of sale, anyway, you're figuring out what their current situation is and what their desired situation is. And that gap in between is where you're going to position yourself as the expert to get them from point A to point B. So I kind of call this the bridge. I feel like I'm going to rename the script to the actual bridge. I'm going to call it the bridge script or something like that. Part four is where you actually figure out their current situation in business. So guys, here's what you're going to do to figure out their current situation. And guys, here's another question I like to use when I'm breaking down the actual script. So I go like this. So John, why do people come to you for your particular service? What's your big promise? That's a good question I like to use. And that basically, again, flips the buyer seller's dynamic. They then have to sell their business to me. They say, well, you know, Montel, we've been in business for X amount of years and we're the best in the industry and that's where out competing. So it actually gives them a reason to kind of justify their business to you. And that get, again, puts you in a more of a advanced and more like expert level, kind of almost like a pedestal, not a pedestal, but you get the idea, guys. It makes you more, seem more important, I guess. So here's the next question.
question I love to ask. I always love to ask. So John, could you show me what your current digital marketing strategy looks like? Just to give me a little bit of context. Most of the time, these business owners don't even have a digital marketing strategy, but it sounds important and it kind of throws them off. So it's like, you've come on this call with a digital marketer and you don't even have a digital marketing strategy. Okay, then it's, it's kind of like they've, they're missing something in their business and you kind of want them to feel that pain as well. Which leads me nicely onto part number five, which is gathering data and causing some pain. You're going to ask them questions such as, do you have a process in place right now to get customers at will through your digital marketing? Those sorts of questions are going to really set them back and throw them back. Now, here comes the most important question of the entire script. You're going to ask them, you know, how much money are you making per month with this business right now? Whatever they say, you're just going to ask them, are you happy with that figure? And then what you're going to do, guys, is jump into part number six, which is figure out what their desired situation is. Let's recap for a second. You figured out why they're there. You've caused some pain, gathered some data. You've done all this up until this point. You've already found the current situation. Now it's time to find their desired situation. So you're going to ask them, so John, in 12 months time, where would you realistically like to be with your business and how much would that per month look like for you, ideally? Then they're going to tell you, well, we're making 10K per month right now. And we want to get up to 20K per month. Then you're going to ask them, okay, so John, what do you actually reckon stopping you from achieving that on your own? Here's a great question. That's a lovely question to ask them, like amazing question, because it's almost like, oh, geez, I actually don't have a clue why I'm not able to get there. So this brings me on to point number seven, which is getting them to release like their control and admit that they don't have a system to do this on their own. So here's what's going to happen, guys. Once they tell you the current situation, the desired situation, you're going to ask them, how come you can't get there on your own? What's going to happen is they're going to tell you they have either inability to get there. They basically want a proven roadmap. They are going to say stuff like, we don't have time to do it. We don't have time to learn Facebook ads. We don't have the expertise, basically. Those are all golden questions. Then guys, you're going to do a little bit more digging. You're going to ask them, okay, so John, what's the reason behind getting to 20K per month or whatever the number is? You're then going to explore what their actual dreams are because what I found in sales is not just the money they're actually going after. For example, business owners might say they want to make 20K per month. It's not actually the money they're going after. It's what the money can actually bring them. And it's the items that they want to buy with the money that can then give them a certain feeling. If you look at the base course of psychology, you see that Maslow's hierarchy of needs actually is very, very true. So if you take, if you don't know what Maslow's hierarchy of needs is, go and take a look at that. That's really like the base of psychology and sales as well. So what I mean by that is, let's say they want to make 20K. You're going to ask them, okay, what's the motivation behind making 20K per month for the business? They're going to start telling you, well, I'll be able to take more trips, take my wife on holiday and stuff like that. Now you're getting into some real, real deep stuff. And you can even ask them, if we could get you to 20K per month, John, how would things be different in your personal life? And sometimes I actually like to throw in little stutters and little, because it sounds more personal and more like I'm actually thinking about what I'm saying next instead of just, you know, using like almost like a pre-built script and sounding robotic. So guys, here's part number eight of the bridge script. If you want to call it a bridge script, I definitely think I'm going to be changing it to the bridge script because it just makes so much sense. But here's what you're going to ask them. So you're going to go, okay, so John, look, you're making 10K per month right now with this business. I mean, that's a commendable fee. I mean, why not just stay where you are? And you're going to ask that question. You're going to go completely silent. By the way, whenever you ask these questions, you go silent, you let them talk. And what's going to happen is they're going to tell you they can't now stay at that 10K because they want that 20K they've told you about before. And what we've done here, guys, is kind of like previously when we asked them what their goal is, what you call future pace them, as in we've actually made them paint a vivid picture in the future of what it would be like having already achieved their desired situation, such as that 20K and what that 20K is going to allow them to do, which is take their wife on holiday more or buy that car they've always wanted. Whatever it is for them, we future paced them and now they have a vivid picture in their head of the future of them being successful and already have the thing that they actually desire. And now we're asking them, okay, so why not just stay where you are? That kind of is like you're dangling like a carrot in front of a donkey and then taking the carrot back. So what's going to happen is, and this is very psychologically based, let me break it down like this to you guys. If I was to give you a hundred grand, let's say that I legitly was about to say, look, whoever's watching this, you know, I'm going to give you a hundred grand. So I'm talking to you personally. I'm going to give you a hundred grand. No catch is involved. I'm going to give you a hundred grand. You can use it for whatever you want. You can invest it, spend it, whatever you want to do. There's literally no catch whatsoever. I then call you back in three days time and say, you know what? Shit, Max or whatever your name is. I'm going to need 50K back of that hundred K. You then give me 50K back. You're going to be more focused on losing 50K than you are being up by $50,000. And the reason that is, is because humans are loss averse. So it's the same principle here where we're talking about their future having achieved that 20k then we say why not just stay where you are at 10k what's going to happen is they're going to start thinking in the loss adverse they already feel like they've made a loss even though nothing's really happened they're still at 10k making good money it's just that they've now thought about what it would be like making 20k and now they cannot not go back to making that 20k they actually want that 20k and they can't go back to making just 10k so that's why that's really really powerful so what's going to happen is they're going to tell you that you know the reasons why they can't stay at 10k and they want to get to 20k and then you're just going to drop this line so you're going to go okay so john why don't you look to fix this and get 20k per month mark so you can actually take your wife on more holidays and go traveling and actually afford that car you've been telling me about when are you looking to fix this i mean you're not looking to fix this now are you that right there is a little bit of psychology as well 
not reverse psychology saying, John, you're not looking to fix this now, are you? So here's what I'm doing. I'm using their own words kind of against them. As in, they tell me they want to get to 20K because they want to afford this thing, that thing, and this thing. So what I'm doing is I'm saying, John, so when are you looking to fix this and get to 20K so you can afford this thing, that thing, and that thing that you just told me about? You're not looking to fix this now, are you? They then say, yes, looking to fix this ASAP. And that's you gaining commitment from them. So guys, here's what you're going to do next. You're going to define the gap even more. So part nine is defining the gap even more as in they're at this and they want to get to this. So they're at A and they want to get to B. So here's what I like to do. I like to go. So John, look, having spoke with you now, I feel like you have two options. Option one is you can continue doing what your business right now and stay at 10K per month, or you can make a change and get finally close to that 20K per month that you told me about that you want to achieve. So you can take your wife on that holiday, get that car and do this thing and that thing. Now, I feel like you're a good fit for what I do. So would you like to hear about my marketing agency services and how we can actually help you scale from 10K to 20K per month? Is that okay? They always say yes to that. So you always want to just ask, is it okay to share? And they say yes to that. Then you break down in part 10 of this script what you're an expert at and you want to position yourself as you're the exact person they're looking for. As in, if they tell you they're a real estate agent and their main struggle is inconsistent leads, you say that um, you're an expert at generating high quality leads on Facebook ads for real estate agents and you typically work with estate agents that have a flow of inconsistent leads and you help them build a system or a machine that helps them bring in consistent leads. In their heads, basically what's going to happen is they're going to think you're the perfect fit and what you need to do is be careful here. You don't want to start explaining all the little features of Facebook ads and how great you are at Facebook ads and like this targeting thing, that targeting thing and how you set up pixels on the page and retarget and all that sort of thing. You want to give them like a 10,000 foot view, keep it vague because you don't want to trigger what you call feature brain where they start focusing and fixating too much on the features of your actual service instead of the actual outcome and the outcome again is always getting them from point A to point B. So always bring it back to the actual outcome. So part 11 is where we flip the script. No pun intended, but here's what's going to happen. Throughout this whole script, you've been asking them questions. Now it's time for them to ask you questions. So once you state your offer, like I just said a second ago, you want to go completely silent. What's going to happen then is they're going to start asking you questions. So they're going to go, okay, so Monta, how does it work? What does this thing do? How do we do that? You're going to answer those questions until they eventually ask the inevitable question, which is, okay, so how much does this all cost per month, Montel? Or how much is this going to cost me? You then drop your price with incentive-based pricing. And this brings us on to part 12, which is the final part, which is closing the sale. Now, guys, there's hundreds of thousands of ways to close sales, but here's what I found to be the best. So again, guys, what's going to happen is they're going to ask questions, 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 questions. You're going to answer them. But whenever you answer them, again, don't answer them in terms of you're talking about the features. You just want to talk about the overall outcome, which is, okay, so we do this, this, and this. We run ads from you know Facebook ads to a funnel that generates leads and gets you on sales calls with your actual customers, John. And that's how we get you from 10K to 20K. So whatever you do, at the end, you always want to bring it back to the outcome. So you're going to answer, 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 and then say, that, John, is how we get you from 10K to 20K per month. And again, is you making them focus on the outcome. Then they're going to ask you the inevitable question. They're going to go, okay, so Montel, how much is all this going to cost me? This is where you use a close with incentive-based pricing attached onto it. So guys, here's how I like to close the sales of incentive-based pricing. I'll go like this. So guys, here's how I like to close out my sales. Again, I offer the incentive-based pricing because it's a way to basically add in a bit of scarcity and make them actually make a payment right here, right now. If you don't give them that, they're never ever gonna do this and you're not ever gonna get a closer client on like an actual call right then, right then. So here's what I like to do. When they ask you the price, you're gonna go, so John, my fee for managing all of this for you is only 1,500 per month and there's a setup fee of $1,000. But John, hear this. I've you know worked with enough clients now to realize a pattern at my agency. I've noticed the client who actually sign on with us quickly and make a decision with us quickly always turn out to be killer clients and we actually just go on and produce awesome results for them. So I want to reward that. So I have set up in my agency what you call incentive-based pricing. So what that means for you, John, is if you make a decision with me today, John, what I'm going to do is actually waive the $1,000 setup fee and leave you with $1,500 per month management fee. How does that sound to you, John? And you basically just go silent from then on, guys. Again, you want to make it even smoother. Like practice it, practice it, practice it until you can just say that very, very smoothly. And that's how I go about closing sales, guys. Again, offer the incentive-based thing, the actual settle fee, and just say that you're going to waive it or give them some sort of discount. So you can even say, so John, my fee for managing this for other clients is normally $2,000 per month. But if you sign with me today, John, what I'll do is I'll actually drop that fee from $2,000 per month to actually $1,500 and we'll call it that. How does that sound to you? 
and you literally just go silent until they actually say yes or no. If they, by the way, say no, that's still good. If they say yes, that's obviously great. What we're not accepting is anything in between, such as maybe I'll think about it, send me an email, anything like that, we're not accepting. But guys, that's how I go about with this whole sales script. Again, this is something that I've learned from some of the actual masters in this game, especially in digital marketing as well. I'm talking people like Dan Lok, Sam Ovens, all the top dogs in the actual industry. This is not just my script. I've taken bits from all over the place and combined it into one script and called it a bridge script. That's literally what it is. But guys, I hope you've enjoyed this. Make sure you drop a like, comment and subscribe. Make sure you turn on the notification bell if you're not already turned that on so you don't miss an upload like this because I'm dropping fire. I've got a video editor now and hopefully he's doing a good job on these videos. Guys, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.